tune in, tone up. Your one-stop shop for guitar, tricks, tips, techniques and advice. With me, Gary Shilladay, and my own excellent teacher, Dan Davis. Okay, just for the quick overview of our your pedal board. Yeah. Okay, so this is more like a touring board, really. Um, it's a big, a big board. It's it's the old pedal train. What do they call it? It's not, I can't remember. Anyway. Yeah. It was the one that at one time it was their biggest board and then they brought out one called the Grande, um, which was even bigger still. It was about half as long a game. Yeah. Uh, how you pick that up as, as one person, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, I, I went through a process of trying different things and I whittled it down to the pedals that sounded great. I really liked them. They do what I need them to do to my signal and I've got a fairly lightweight setup, and there's room to move with other pedals should I wish to add to what I've already got. So, starting far right, I have a quick whisk through this. This is a Dunlop Wah Wah Mini Wah. Wah Wah Mini Wah. Dunlop <laughs> Mini Wah. It does everything you want a Wah Wah to do, unless you want sort of a Wah Wah with a slightly different range, or you want something which is more of a. Um, a Swiss Army knife of wires like the old sort of 535Q, they now do a mini version of that, which wasn't around when I bought this. The reason I got this wire, as you see, it sits on a little booster platform, making it easier to access a slightly more sort of um, foot friendly angle. Yeah, the reason I went for that is because of the weight it saves. It's, it saves, you know, probably getting on for a, a kilo and a half in weight off the board, right. Um, before the, the, the full wah wah was great, but I didn't think it was the best wah and it was incredibly heavy for what it did. Next to this, we have the Boss Chromatic Tuner TU3. Does what it says on the tin. Yeah. It's a chromatic tuner, so you can tune any note, any instrument. Drop tunings, no problem. If you're a band and you're playing C sharp, uh, drop C sharp, no problem. A chromatic tuner will do what it says, it will tune you up. <laughs> Below this, we have the Sir Coco Boost. I bought this for a, a song on eBay. Uh, yep. You have a clean boost on the left hand side, a mid boost on the right, and when you're in mid boost mode, you have a three way toggle switch which allows you to choose between the different kinds of boost that you want. Yeah, it's really, really useful. I'll get onto that later. Above that, we have the MXR Dynacomp Mini. It's basically a Dynacomp pedal, the classic compressor from the 70s, plus a button for attack, which never happened before. You didn't have a, a, a knob or anything for attack on the compressor until the Supercomp came along. So that gives you that extra feature in a nice, sensibly priced, lightweight package. Below that, we've got the MXR Phase 90. The EVH version, you press a button, which gives you the old 70s script uh, kind of circuitry, or press the button so it's out, and you get the more classic EVH sound where the, the, the phaser is more present in the mix. Above this, we have the heart of my board. This is the Strymon Timeline, and the Strymon Timeline gives me all of my delays. So plugging into a nice quality valve amp, I use the drive that's on the amp. I sculpt the drive that's on the amp a little bit by adding the Coco Boost. And also, obviously, there's the EQ on the amp. I've got two master volumes on each amp, so I've got a boost for solos already there. And the delay pedal allows me to store a myriad of different delay settings. So if you're playing in a wedding band and you... You know, you're playing something like The Streets Have No Name where you've got a very specific delay time, you can do that. If you just want a general ambience to your sound or thicken your sound up a little bit, it will do that. In fact, pretty much anything delay related. Below that, we have two more Strymon pedals. We have the Olar, which is a chorus, and it's also a vibrato pedal, and it allows you to store an additional sound in it, labelled favourite. So that's very useful. Two choruses, all vibratos, or one of each in one pedal. 
Then the Strymon and Flint, which we have the reverb, which I pretty much leave on constantly. And then on the other side is the tremolo effect. Let's get on to the, oh, there's one more, sorry, before we get on to the front row. Here is like a generation of four or fourth generation Diddy set whammy pedal. Slightly synthetic sounding, kind of has its own sound. You can either love it or hate it. Um, but that coach with all of my sort of octave up, octave down, and Matt Bellamy yeah. kind of weird sounds. <laughs> well, who's the other guy from Rage Against the Machine? Tom Morello. That one. Yeah. <laughs> Underneath the board, um, apart from the power supply, which is a, a Chox DC-10, or Seahawks DC-10, I also have a, a four-way maze extension for yep. some of the pedals which need their own power supply, so I can sort of extend what I've got. Um, I've also got a Line 6 G30, and uh, that's my radio pack yep. here. Okay. So it means I can leave the board if necessary. I know, essentially, if you're standing fairly close to a board, there isn't a lot of necessity for a radio pack. And I have plenty of times run run a live setup with a cable, but it kind of gets in the way a little bit. Yeah. You know, I find. So actually, even just to keep cabling to the minimum, for me personally, I'd, I'd like that. On the front row. We have a gig rig, a Quartermaster 6. This is a loop system. Now, many people these days make systems like this. Every individual pedal, in this case, that's going into the front of the amp, so guitar in and then guitar out to the amp, is in its own loop. So we have the compressor sits in the first loop. Right. So you can turn the compressor on and off. That's right. Click in that button there. Wah wah, loop 2. Coco Boost Loop 3, Tuna Loop 4, Phaser Loop 5, Whammy Pedal Loop 6. So those are the six pedals which are essentially going in the front, sort of. The Tuna, as you can see, there's a line into it, but not out of it. Because oh, yeah. we basically don't need to send the signal back again. Okay. Uh, and that also, good, acts, isn't as it? A, indeed, it yeah. also acts as a mute. Yeah. Or should you should you need to mute in between songs to do anything? The delay chorus and tremolo reverb sit in, in the effects loop. Yep. And this is the multi switch which allows me, as you can see, you see oh, the name sorry, change, we the toggle thing. through the sounds yep. in okay. the strive and timeline. Finally, there is a channel switcher. I sort of does all the amp switching, and this is when I'm using my Cornford. Yeah. If I'm using a Marshall, I use a separate foot switch just placed to the you, side. You had that one built, didn't you? I had that one built by Bright Onion Pedals, fantastic company down here in Brighton. Very, very reasonable uh, and great service, and they do things will do things bespoke for you. Yeah. And they've had some pretty big hitters like the Red Hot Chili Peppers use their stuff, so yeah, you know, they're, they're road ready. They even do a replacement for the multi switch, which is a fraction of the price. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not the 80 quid I spent on mine. So, this is my board. Okay, so I take them through mine quickly. Yeah, let's go. Before we uh, head on with kind of the sounds. Let's do that. The lesson. So, we've got um, a board that's been, and my shoes, a board that's been uh, adapted mainly for, to add a loop in here. So, that's the Boss RC. 30 loop with uh, two pedals in there, uh, one to literally start recording, one to press that again to stop recording, press it again to start recording and overdub, and then this stops and starts the uh, whole loop system. So for me, that's going through the effects. I'm doing it kind of back to front at the moment, I guess, so let's start at the beginning. Got the chromatic tuner, same thing as uh, on Dan's board. And then that runs straight into the compressor. And that's my compressor. It's got sustain on there, attack, tone, and level. That's the boss uh, compressor there. Then we've got the overdrive OD3. We used to have the super overdrive, I think it was on there, didn't I? That yeah. sounded really rough, actually, but this yeah. is quite nice. That's sweet. Um, 
I've also got this reverb pedal as well, which I run into the effects. So into the loop, it goes, um, which order have I got it in? I don't think it's in exact order here. I think it's reverb first, then chorus, then equalizer. Can't really, honestly, can't remember. Dan, you probably know better than me. What the, I've got it in the standard order, and then the delay, and then the loop station, and that's literally my pedal. I mean, no, normally, if we're going into the loop, road, feel free to experiment. We see this on every website. If you listen to um, Dan and Mick on the pedal, pedal show, they will say the same thing. Yeah, you're not going to do any damage to your pedals by no. trying them in a different order, putting them in the loop, putting them in the front. So there's no harm in experimenting. Sometimes what some pedals do to another pedal um, can make a, a quite a pleasing effect. You know, some people like their delay through the front because it's dirty, yeah, because it's messy. Other people find that you know just completely can't can't live with that. I think when I saw Gus G, he said he had two pedals. Right. That was it. Both were delay, one through the front, one through the back, or something. Yeah, I mean, it might it might be a case that if you blend the two, if you if you find in the loop is a little bit too pristine and clean, and straight through the front for your delay needs is just a little bit too filthy. That blending the two works for you. Yeah, maybe that's the case. Generally, it sort of modulations come fairly early on in a loop usually. Um, I would say then followed by delay and then reverb sort of last of all. Although you might want to add on the end, it doesn't matter too much where you put it, a boost in the loop if you want to sort of boost for solos. So yeah. you can put that at the beginning of the loop, you can put that at the end. You just have to be aware that obviously you're, you're slamming the front end of all of your other pedals yeah. with your boost, which some pedals might like and some pedals might not. If you put it at the beginning of your chain, or as you if you put it last in line before you go into the effects loop, then you might well end up with a slightly cleaner, sort of clearer signal. Should we stop shaky cam and start the lesson proper? Let's do that. Stay tuned for more episodes, jams, improvisation ideas, and well-informed thoughts about amps, pedals, and guitar tone. If you enjoy this podcast, leave us a review on iTunes, find us on SoundCloud, or see our website on tunein-toneup.com. Here you'll find show notes, tabs, and further research and resources. It's also a good place to get in touch. We hope you're finding these lessons as interesting and as useful as I do, and if you have any suggestions, we'd love to hear them. Hey.